So I want to take some time to look at this focus group from Alison Camarota of CNN. I really enjoy these segments where she talks to voters because I think it's a really easy way to pick the brains of people without actually having to talk to people, which I certainly uh, like. So she's going to talk to uh, white women from swing districts in the state of Pennsylvania about the 2020 election and who they're going to vote for. They're politically kind of all over the place. You know, some went from Obama to Trump. Some have voted for Republicans and Democrats. So I think it's really interesting to see what they have to say because I want to know their thoughts so we can respond accordingly and give ourselves, you know, the tools that we need, the arguments that we can use to persuade people like this if they are, in fact, persuadable. Now, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be um, a train wreck. So we'll see. I'm not... Uh, I haven't seen this, so I'm watching this for the first time. My reaction is genuine. But um, nonetheless, let's uh, let's go ahead and hear what they have to say. On Wednesday, we introduced you to a group of six voters from two key swing districts in Pennsylvania. These voters are an important demographic, white women without college degrees. All say they vote for the person, not the party. Three of them voted for Barack Obama and then Donald Trump. So we wanted to know which candidates and issues interest them this time and how many plan to vote for President Trump. Here now is part two of our Pulse of the People. So show of hands, how many of you have at times voted for Republicans and at times Democrats? All of you. How many? Okay, I've got to stop it right there because I already have something I want to say. So this is something that even though it's odd, it's not like unfamiliar. Like we all know someone in our family or social circle who kind of goes back and forth, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. And usually the thing that I find with these types of people is they're always looking for change. Like they want someone who's offering them solutions to problems. And when the left winger doesn't offer them solutions, then they opt for the right winger. And I use the term left winger loosely because Bill Clinton and Obama, these were not left wingers. They're centrists. But, you know, I digress. Uh, they want change, but they're not getting it. And so this is why I really want people to learn about political ideology and political philosophy. So that way they have some set of underlying core values that they use to evaluate the candidates. So that way they know, okay, a left winger is saying that we need to uh, deregulate and um, cut taxes for the wealthy. And they need to be able to pick up on the cues that, okay, this is what is going to happen if we opt for that solution. But you see, people, they, they just, they don't have time, right? They're working too much. Um, they're overworked, underpaid, and they don't have time to pick up on these types of things. They don't have time to educate themselves. So this is where you and I come in, where we have to educate them and let them know who is and isn't the real deal. But I mean, this is not uncommon, even though it's weird. Like I couldn't imagine going back and forth. I know people who have done this. Like my dad is a perfect example. He voted for, I believe, Bill Clinton, um, hated Bill Clinton. Then he voted for George W. Bush, hated Bush. Then he voted for Obama and, you know, was incredibly enthusiastic, did not like Obama one bit. So he opted for Bernie in 2016. But the thing about that is Bernie lost. And I don't know if he even participated in the general election in 2016. Um, I, I tried to convince him to still vote regardless because of all the you know ballot initiatives and whatnot. If he did vote, I, I think he probably voted for Jill Stein. But either way, like I know these types of people. And the reason why nobody's been able to produce a solution, no politician has been able to produce a solution that works is because the system itself is able to easily co-opt people in one way or another. So we keep getting the same result, even though there's different politicians and there's still continuity because, I mean, we're not actually getting anyone who's doing the change they say they want. Of you voted for President Obama and then voted for President Trump. Okay, so Marion, explain how you were able to vote for both. I voted for Trump because he was not a politician. You, you get tired of the same old, same old from um, Washington. That, and I really wanted someone that would make big changes. President Trump, he said he was going to take care of us and he was going to make sure we had more money in our paychecks Did and, he know? and help us out because Did he? you go to work, you work hard and you have nothing. And then there's people that don't even work that have more than I do. Has your life okay. economically financed? I want to stop that right there because what she's essentially alluding to is this re residual notion that, you know, dated back to the Reagan era that there are these welfare queens that they don't work, but they live off of welfare and they have these lavish lives. You know, their their fridges are stocked. Meanwhile, you're working nine to five and you're struggling. You're overpaid 
and um, you know, over you're under you're overworked and underpaid. I just used that same phrase and I fucked it up already. But regardless, you know, you're you're overworked and underpaid and you feel like, oh, these people who aren't working, they have it all. But what people like this don't realize is that that's not true. That's factually incorrect. People are struggling. The reason why you are working so hard and you really don't see the fruits of your labor is because capitalists decided that they could make more money if they deny you the value produced by your labor. This is capitalism's doing. This is the result of capitalism. They wanted to maximize profits and, you know, pay their CEOs more. So as a result, that means that you're going to get less. This is what happens. So it's not, you know, the people who are on welfare or the immigrants who are the reason why you're hurting. It's capitalism. And this is why I really think education is so important because people don't know that the system is designed to make people feel like they are desperate, right? Because that's what's happening. We have income and wealth inequality that is absolutely insane. We just got over the 2008 Great Recession. And even though the economy and the stock market has recovered, normal people aren't really seeing the benefits of that gain. So people, they just, they need someone to blame. And rather than blaming the system, they blame their peers because this is what they were told. And um, I just, I don't know how we move beyond that. How do we get past this welfare queen notion, which is completely bogus. People on welfare are absolutely struggling and desperate. I was on welfare at one point, And I can tell you, I didn't want to stay on welfare because I didn't want to be extremely fucking poor, right? And living off of food banks. Like whatever I got from uh, food stamps with my family when we were younger, whatever we got from food stamps, it wasn't enough. So we had to go to food banks. So, I mean, it's not like they're living these lavish lives. Like people want to work, most people, because they want to make money. They want to be able to survive and sustain, you know, an income that will actually allow them to buy a house, buy a car. But that's not the economy that we live in anymore. That's, that's not the reality. Things have changed because the system is rigged because that's exactly what we can expect from capitalism. But I'm going to go off on a, an um, anti-capitalist tangent, so let's go ahead and just get back to the video and I'll shut the fuck up. Actually improved under President Trump. I have, um, I have a lot more in my paycheck. I, I do have more in my paycheck as well. My um, stock portfolio is doing great. <laughs> <laughs> that too. See, yeah. maybe that's why I look at the economy different. Um, I'm not where a lot of you are financially, I don't think. Uh, I'm pretty darn low income. Uh, my family has received food stamps personally. Um, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, till recently, I worked at a grocery store, um, and now I am running a cafe. Do you think that the economy is doing great? No. I think the economy for the upper middle class has gotten better, and that's great for them. But the economy hasn't gotten better for me. Crystal, you voted in 1992 exactly. for Bill Clinton. You didn't vote again in, in an election until 2016. Is that right? Donald Trump was running. And I said, finally, another businessman. And I got fired up. Has he lived up to your expectations? Absolutely. I think he can, he's really? doing just fine. If he says, this is what I'm going to do at this timeline, he does it. Well, he hasn't built the wall. That was one of his I was just going to say that. So, I mean, do you hold that promise against him? No, because isn't the whole wall part of getting the money from Congress, too? And isn't Congress stopping him from getting the money? He said Mexico was going to pay for it. Okay, I feel like this is someone who is probably too far gone. Like, it's very easy to become susceptible to whatever bullshit you hear on Fox News if that's kind of the bubble that you insert yourself in, right? So I'm sure she drank the Kool-Aid, and now she's too far gone. She went from Bill Clinton to Donald Trump. That's quite the shift, but I mean, to be satisfied with Donald Trump, you can't be satisfied with Trump if you know the whole picture. Like, if you know that he is bombing children in other countries, our bombs are being sold to Saudi Arabia and they're using it on babies. How can you still support him knowing that? Like, when I found out that Obama had increased the drone war that was initiated by George Bush... He lost my support, essentially. And I was late to the party, right? I had cognitive dissonance, and I didn't want to realize it. And maybe she's experiencing this. But, I mean, if you know everything, you can't unknow that, right? You can't take back that knowledge. You can't put the cat back in its bag. So, she doesn't have the full picture if you still support Donald Trump. He cut his own taxes. That's his one major legis legislative achievement. He cut his own taxes. How can you be satisfied with that? I just, I don't get it.
climate change still doesn't even acknowledge that it's a real thing. Um, what little progress we've made under Obama, he's undoing that. And even though the Paris Climate Accord wasn't that substantial, it was something. So I feel like she's probably too far gone, but other people here, probably not as much. I don't know. It just depends. I have to see what they say. Where's the money going to come from? Is he just supposed to print it right there at the White House? Um, well, he did take some Mexico, from the defense I think budget. It's coming from Mexico yeah. was the I, campaign I promise. I believe that's literally a quote. How many of you, <laughs> if the election were held today, show of hands, would vote for President Trump? Oh, that's okay, good. Just one, one of you would. Lisa just Marie, one. are you on the fence? I liked him in the beginning when he first came out. He was saying things like it is, um, probably saying things like most of us think but don't want to say. But I'm also thinking he's gotten out of control. That's just him. Okay. I'm, the, I mean, I'm gonna stop it's... right here because like, even though I think it was pretty obvious that Donald Trump was a con man, he was a fake populist. Like I'm willing to give these people a pass, even though I think it's really morally reprehensible that they still voted for him in spite of the racism, in spite of the xenophobia, in spite of the warmongering mixed in with some anti-interventionist isolationist things. But I mean, I'll give you a pass. But you don't get a pass if you know now exactly what he's doing and you vote for him again. So this person is the only person on this panel that really seems too far gone. Um, these are people who, to me, seems like they want change. And I really hope that Allison asks a question about uh, Bernie Sanders. Because if I had to guess, it seems like they would be open to voting for Bernie. Because these seem like people who are just, they want a change candidate. They want someone who's anti-establishment. Watch him from the 80s on. He's just, I mean, he used to go on the Oprah show and stuff. He's just always been so candid about, I can do that movie star, or I can do this. He's just, well, he's a, a reality he's star. He's just Donald Boom. Trump. You like that he's unapologetic. I like that he's unapologetic. So in Ugh. terms of any personal indiscretions, in terms of paying hush money to a porn star, all that stuff, show of hands, how many people are bothered by that? What bothers you? Can he we not was by the asked, did you, like, I get, just like Bill Clinton, pretty much, did you have sex with this woman? Did you bribe, like, pay her off? And he said no. And it came out, he did. And people are like, ah, eh, you know what, it's not a big deal. But he did lie to us. There's no remorse. There's no regret. There's no <sighs> humility. I don't and vote for personalities. I vote for who's going to get the job done. And why are you on the fence today? Okay. I'm yes. Don't vote for personalities. But corruption isn't something that is uh, related to personality. Like, she was asked, or they were asked about the hush money payments. Corruption. How can you just excuse that? Like, if you realize that money in politics and corruption is an issue, it's rampant, and he wanted to drain the swamp, but yet he's obviously corrupt, obstruction of justice, the hush money payments, the emoluments clause violations, how can you just, like, overlook that? Like, that has to be a massive caveat, even if you like his policies, right? Like, I don't know that I could support Bernie Sanders if he was that corrupt, but if I did, which I probably wouldn't, I'd still have to say, look, in spite of the corruption... I like the policies, but they're not like they're just kind of sweeping it under the rug. And that's what I don't get about Trump supporters. Like it's a cult, right? It's they, they just don't really care. Eh, he, I hate corruption, but Trump's corruption, that's OK. Uh, the Democratic Party's corruption, that's bad. But Trump's corruption, eh, it's not really corruption. Here's an explanation X, Y and Z for it. Or also Obama did it. Uh, it just there's no consistency here. And it just the problem with American politics is it is really personality driven. Like people don't necessarily care as much about policy uh, when it's all said and done. You kind of you put policy front and center insofar as, you know, your policy ideals align with the candidates uh, vision of what they want, what he or she wants for the country. And that's not the way that things should be. You should have a cohesive political ideology and set of policy preferences that you put front and center and if a candidate deviates from that then you stop supporting that candidate that's the way that it should be and um policies are something that matter to people right like i'm not trying to say that people don't care about policy but politics is more personality driven than i think that i've acknowledged before and it's really frustrating that's kind of becoming evident throughout the course of the 2020 democratic party primary but i'll let them go ahead and finish because we're almost done with this on the fence until i make the decision i like to wait for the debates i want to see who is out there but i mean there's so many candidates right now i can't even pretend to know everything about all of them or even most of the things about all of them
Is there any Democrat that speaks to you or that appeals Pete to you? Pete Buttigieg. Oh, kill I me. Like I, Pete. I mean, I like that Pete. guy, he's a Harvard graduate. He was in the military. Mm -hmm. He's smart. He's just uh, articulate. He has great ideas. How do you go from Trump to Pete to Buttigieg? To Show of hands, how many people like Pete Buttigieg? Marion, is there any Democrat mm -hmm. thus far that has appealed to you or that you think jumps out? Biden right now uh, seems to jump I out. Can't. But, you know, it can change because I uh, think, you know, they keep saying they're going to bring on someone that they haven't announced yet. I'm Who's just, they? <laughs> yeah. The Democratic I Party. I didn't hear that. So um, I'm just waiting. But it's gotten to the point where you don't know who to believe anymore. I'm going to be totally honest. Once again, I, I listen to media. I listen to people here or there in restaurants. And, and kind of forming my opinions um, from other people's opinions. No, and don't I do that. I just started don't researching and looking and, and yes. looking at different articles and, and going to Hillary Bernie. Clinton. I always thought Benghazi, Hillary, that was her deal, the emails and everything. But once you read enough articles and, and you She's look at a lot a of good things, point. she really didn't do anything wrong, you know? Um, interestingly enough, I, I was actually shocked by that, you Hillary know, because this is what oh I heard God, and this is what I thought. We are in this polarized world right now mm -hmm. where everybody only goes to their own news source that okay. they think that, that speaks to them. And I do think a lot of Americans just don't have the time or the energy or, the, or have the right interest. information or interest. It's, mm -hmm. it's, think, it could be a full-time job a for somebody. Email. I think that's really a, a great point. Okay, so let's lightning round. One word, we'll go around to describe how you see the 2020 race. Do you want to start, Allison? Sure. Polarizing. Confusing. Too much information out there, you're saying? Yes. Intriguing. Trump. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> shut up. She's so I would have to just say um, change. I don't know if I can say it in one word. Um, I really just think it's going to be um, enlightening. That was, um, that was bad. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting much. It seemed like these were change people and then they go for Buttigieg. Or Biden. Okay. <laughs> people don't know what they want. I don't know what people want. Everything is stupid and we are living in hell. Like, I get it. People don't have time. People, um, they don't necessarily have the time to go through and research all these candidates and learn about their histories. But Bernie Sanders now, he's been in Congress for 350 years. He has the same, he's been saying the same things. He has a consistent record. I mean, if you're an anti-establishment pro-change candidate, how do you just not like automatically opt for someone like that, Right. I don't know. This was soul crushing. Um, I kind of wish that I didn't watch this because it put me in a bad mood. But regardless, um, yeah, there you have it. Um, white women from swing districts in uh, Pennsylvania. They're either raw, raw Donald Trump or they love Pete Buttigieg um, or Biden. So um, in other words, we are all totally fucked because, yeah, these people will... Uh, they may not necessarily decide the primary, but they're going to be really important in the general. And yes, this is just an anecdote, right? This is six people. But still, I think that these are important because it gives gives us a little bit of insight into the minds of people. And um, yeah, that person has drunk the Trump Kool-Aid, so she's too far gone. And a lot of them like Pete Buttigieg. I mean, who he appeals to, it just... It makes no sense to me. This is someone who is elitist. Like, you, you, you support Donald Trump. I think that person who was, you know, talking about all the things about people to judge that, that she liked, I think that she was a Trump voter, no? Am I am I not remembering uh, that correctly? Let me go back. Two of our Pulse of the People. And I for Trump because he... All of you. For Republicans and at times Democrats. All of you. How many of you voted for President Obama and then voted for President Trump? Okay, so, Marianne, so she did explain vote for Trump. You so you went from Donald Trump to Pete Buttigieg. They are polar opposites. One had this anti-establishment pseudo-populist appeal because he wasn't an elitist, right? He spoke with, you know, a third grade level vocabulary. And now you're going to Pete Buttigieg who sniffs the smell of his own farts out of a wine glass, who speaks 32 languages. I just... I don't get it. Like, this doesn't make any sense to me. But, um, 
Whatever. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay? <laughs>